Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I posted an ad stating that we wanted to adopt a baby. A woman named Annette answered it and she had twins. They were excited to be parents. I just want to hold my babies for the first time. Monica has become obsessed with the cribs, the clothes, the strollers. Thirty-five to forty thousand dollars in preparing for the babies. But a good friend had a bad feeling. A lot of things about the adoption do not add up in my mind. You think she's being scammed? I do. Well, the birth mother, Danette, is here. Where are the newborn twins? You've seen these pictures, but you've not touched those babies. No. So let's just talk turkey here. Is she ever going to touch those babies? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Bill. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. Three, five, four. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Monica and Max were so desperate to become parents that they put an ad on Craigslist in order to find a baby. Here's a portion of the ad Monica wrote. My husband and I are a loving family and looking to adopt. We have two teenagers living with us full time and I, the wife, cannot have a baby. Please, if you are a woman looking to adopt out your beautiful baby, please contact us. We're a very easygoing family and have a beautiful nursery and tons of love and security to offer. Well, as luck would have it, soon after they posted the ad, Monica says she got a response from a woman named Danette who was looking to place her baby for adoption. Take a look. I posted an ad on Craigslist stating that we wanted to adopt a baby. A woman contacted us named Danette. She stated that she was pregnant with a baby girl. Danette and Monica had almost an instant connection. Danette told me that she had been raped and she became pregnant. She didn't know what she was going to do with this child. When Danette told me that, my heart went out to her. I asked her a lot of questions. Danette and I started talking every day. After talking to Danette for a month, she wanted Max and I to adopt the baby. We were ecstatic. We were on cloud nine. Danette started sending us ultrasounds and information about doctor's visits that she had. So we started a Facebook page to document everything that was going on. I wanted everybody else to be able to share in the joy. They were able to get updates as we were. After talking to Danette for about two months, I drove out of state to go meet her. We sat and talked for hours. She says, do you want to fill her kick? When I touched her stomach, I felt our daughter kick. I was so excited. About a month before the baby was born, Danette said the guy that raped her had been caught. Danette told us this person could have parental rights. The next day, she told me that he had bonded out of jail. Danette kept assuring us that the baby would still be ours. She spoke to me about flying to our hometown and having the baby out here. The day that Danette was to fly to our hometown to give birth, she went into labor. Well, you just heard that this mystery mom, Danette, said she was pregnant with a rapist baby. And as the due date neared, the father of this baby, the rapist, actually gets out of jail. Now, concerned that he could possibly want parental rights, Monica and Max quickly arranged for Danette to fly out of state to deliver the baby in a hospital near them. When suddenly, nope, that can't happen. Why? Because Danette goes into labor. And yet another twist. Danette was not just pregnant with one baby. She tells the parents that she just delivered twins. Take a look. I got a text from one of Danette's co-workers saying she didn't just have our daughter, but she also had a boy, that we had twins. I was extremely shocked and extremely excited. Danette gave birth to the baby girl first, and she was 9 pounds, 7 ounces. The boy was 3.2 pounds. This was definitely a dream come true. We named the girl Michaela Love, and we named the boy Mason David. The day after the children were born, Danette told me that the father wanted custody of the children. 
Right now, the babies aren't in Danette's possession. They are in foster care. At this point, the babies are almost two months old. Monica is completely devastated. A court date's been set up for next week. Danette's going to get the birth father's rights relinquished, so we're able to bring home our babies. It's killing me. I just want to hold and meet my babies for the first time. Well, Monica says she and Max have spent about $40,000 preparing for a baby. Max says Monica's spending, well, he says it's just out of control. We have spent around thirty to forty thousand to have a child of our own. I've purchased books, furniture, clothes. I have tons of blankets. This is for the car seat. We moved from a three-bedroom condo to a four-bedroom house. The cribs, the clothes, the strollers, I'm talking thousand dollar strollers that are extreme that I think you'd have to be an astronaut to figure out how to use. We bought a brand new SUV. It's room for all of our kids. Since we found out that we're having twins, I had to change everything. Probably going to move a piece of this out to one of the other rooms, put another crib in here. The room was prepared for a girl, and now that we had Mason, we had to make sure that he had everything. And of course, I had to give him his whole wardrobe. I have his closet here for you, him. You went shopping. <laughs> Throughout this entire process, our house converted into the baby house. She's doubled, if not tripled up on everything. Not 10 bottles, but 50 bottles. Not two sets of diapers, but 20 sets of diapers for children that aren't even here yet. I think we have enough stuff for both of them. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, Monica, Max, this has clearly been the centerpiece of your life as, as you're moving towards this adoption. How did you feel when you found out it was two babies instead of one? I was excited. That's a good thing? or I mean, I, <laughs> Amazing. I know it, it, was a, it was a good thing. How have you dealt with the disappointments along the way? Because you were going to have her come and deliver the babies in your hometown instead of where she was. Then she has the babies, so she can't. How did you feel about that? I was very disappointed because I wanted to be there for the delivery. I wanted to cut the cord or um, if she had to have, you know, a C-section. I wanted to be there. You've become really close friends with her, right? I have. When you found out that this was a product of rape, mm -hmm. that had to be a moment to think about, right? What was your reaction to that? I just wanted to know that they were healthy. Um, but you found out that, in fact, they may not be healthy, right? Michaela could possibly have um, a slight autism. Right. And that Mason, um, he was so small, because we didn't know about him, that, you know, he's going to have probably some health issues. Okay. And you named the babies? I named them. We named them. Michaela and Mason? Right. Yes. Okay. And you, you said she's gotten a little obsessive about spending the money? More than just obsessive, yes, absolutely. Yeah, thirty-five to forty thousand dollars in preparing for the baby. Bigger house, bigger cars, because you got to have room. Uh, handmade blankets and clothing. Fifteen hundred dollars to go visit her. Seven hundred dollars in gifts. A hundred dollars to her for Christmas dinner. Paid her electric bill over three hundred bucks. Eight hundred and fifty dollars on one stroller. Then you bought three others. <laughs> Well, I switched because one of them couldn't be used as a double, so okay, I needed... So, but then you got another one, 400, so you now have four. Yes. It's a lot. Yeah. I think Monica has become over-obsessed with the entire baby process. What's it mean to you to finally have a baby? Everything. But you haven't seen these babies yet. No. Because at this point, they've been placed into protective care until the adjudication of this now-released rapist mm -hmm. that wants custody or you just want to terminate it where he can't have a chance? Both. I was told he wants custody, mm -hmm. and I don't want a rapist touching my children. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to find out why Monica's best friend sent me a letter with a desperate plea about you. We'll be right back.
Monica and I have been the best of friends for the past five years. There's a lot of things about the adoption that just does not add up. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Miranda Barber says she has murdered dozens of people across the country. Accused of murder. Do you have any doubt that she could kill this man? Oh, I know she did. For the first time, her mother and sister speak out. Did she attack you with a knife when she was 12? Yeah. She says you ignored red flags that Miranda was in a cult. The exclusive interview. Do you believe that she has killed other people? Monday, then on Tuesday. He says he's only cheated on his wife once. Is this number two? A lying husband's affairs exposed. How many more chairs do we need? All new Dr. Phil. That's Tuesday. Monica and I have been the best of friends for the past five years. She's like a sister to me and my maid of honor. Once Monica started on the adoption process, I had to take a step back. She's extremely emotionally involved, not only to these children, the twins, but to this woman. I've seen probably every single one of Dr. Phil's episodes on catfishing. I compared Monica's life to one of Dr. Phil's catfish shows, and a light bulb went off. There's a lot of things about the adoption that just does not add up. So on Facebook, I read that miraculously the mother gave birth to twins. I was shocked because how in this day and age do you not know that you have twins on Facebook? The photos made me very suspicious. The photos were highly digitalized, thus making them look cropped, or I thought maybe that they were photos of photos. People have their doubts, but I've touched Jeanette's stomach. I felt her foot. I felt her kick. I would say she's blinded by love for these babies. What Monica needs to realize is that this woman is scamming her. I just feel bad for her. This is painful for me because Monica is so deserving of a child. And I know she would be a fabulous mother. It breaks my heart. So, Wendy, you wrote in, you think she's being scammed. I do. Do you think that there are no babies, or do you think that this mother's just simply not going to allow the babies to be adopted? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea, but just there's so many red flags to me. You said red flags. Yeah. There's no adoption paperwork here. No. I mean, all of this has just been talking back and forth. You can't find a rape incident report. No. Right? There's no medical records that have been provided on the babies. You, okay. No proof of pregnancy. No. I, you say you know because I, you've actually felt the babies move. I, I felt her kick when I went out and visited her. Okay. Birth mother smoked while she was pregnant, so I kind of think, like, what would she actually do that? Yeah, I wasn't happy about that. And then. The birth mother said she would deliver a couple of weeks late. She said she was late with all her children. Um, she was always about two weeks late, yeah. and she just happened to be exactly, I was going to fly her out that morning. She wanted to wait till last minute to, to fly out, uh -huh. and then she went into labor. Okay, well, you, you'd call the hospital, though, but they couldn't connect to her room? They couldn't connect to her room. Why? They said that she was in per kind of a protective custody because of the rapist. The hospital said that? The hospital said that. And now, the birth mother also said she went to the hospital because she had a blood clot. Correct. And you couldn't find that either? No, I drove out there to go visit her in the hospital. I was concerned, and I thought, well, maybe I could see her and I'm close to the date for the court. Okay, and she had friends, but you were never able to talk to any of her friends, which would kind of collaterally validate this, right? Correct. They always texted me. Um, Vonda texted me from her um, from right. her cell phone number, and um, a friend named Anita would text from Danette's cell phone. She well, said she didn't have one. What do you know about this Danette? I've been out there. I stayed for a week to visit her, and she was nice. I mean, she's easy to get along with. Um, she seems like she loves her kids. She's 
you know, having a hard time financially, but she seemed like a genuine person to me. Mm -hmm. And you felt her stomach and you felt the kick. You, I mean, I it was, did. she's visible and you, yes, you felt the kick. Yes, she lifted her shirt and she says, do you want to fill your daughter? And I said, absolutely. Why Craigslist? Why, why not go to an adoption agency? Why not register, go through the process, do whatever? Why go this way? I was wanting to do different avenues of it, and why? she just happened to contact me. Well, why? Why do different avenues? Um, well, I was online one day on Craigslist, and I noticed a, um, an ad for adoption, and I thought, why hadn't I tried that? What's really going on with these twins? Well, the answer to that lies in Danette, and she is here. We're going to meet her when we come back. My greatest fear with all of this is she's been lying to me and the babies don't exist. It would be one of the meanest things someone can possibly do. And I would hope that no one is that cruel. If this doesn't work out, I worry about what may happen to Monica. This is everything to her. If it's not real, it will devastate her. This May on Dr. Phil, shocking accusations. How do you feel about being here with Chris? I am terrified. I am guilty of being a bad dad, but I am not a pedophile. You know what you did to me. Stop lying. Dramatic interventions. My mother is more attached to her junk than her kids. I don't believe I'm a hoarder. Oh, my God. These are things that you've saved. You just never know when you might need a wheel. Plus, Dr. Bill exclusives all month long. House of Horror survivor Michelle Knight returns. She will appear here in front of a live studio audience. You won't believe where she's living now. An exclusive look. I did not set the house on fire to kill my children. You said Melissa man-raped me. I didn't want it. She came on to me. Well, you poor thing. Am I going to get my word to talk? This is my story. This is just not what I came on this show for. This May on Dr. Phil. When I think about Mason and Michaela, I'm so excited. I brag about them all the time. I feel like they're ours. I'm already a dad. I'm just waiting for them. The last time I got a picture of the babies was almost a week and a half ago. The babies are getting bigger. They both have completely different personalities. Danette's told me Michaela is very independent and she is the stubborn one. And that Mason doesn't like to be fussed with. When I see the picture of Michaela, I think that she's my beautiful daughter. When I look at Mason's picture, I have a little bit more of an attachment with him because I feel like he needs me more. I'm thinking about raising them and trying to offer them whatever we can to make their lives better than ours. That's what parents do. At this point, you are ready. If, if she comes out here, and if this is hung up in the court system and using our resources, we can get lawyers and break this loose and put those babies in your arms, you're ready. Absolutely. I mean, you're ready to wrap those I have the car up. seat in the car. Well, the question is whether these parents have been scammed. Well, Danette is here to answer that question. She says she was very happy when she came across Monica's adoption uh, ad on Craigslist. Take a look. I met Monica by responding to her ad on Craigslist. I told her I was interested in her adopting my baby. I found Monica's personality very attractive and we just clicked. My relationship with Monica was like having a best friend, another sister. I thought Monica was a really great person that she'd make a good mother. She was funny and nice and kind and caring and just a good person. I always ensured Monica and Max, no matter what happened, everything would be just fine and that they would get the baby. Okay, uh, Danette is going to come out and join us right now. Danette, Dr. Phil, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a seat right here. Um, I'm glad you're here, and I, I've been talking to Monica and Max, who you know. This is her best friend, Wendy. Hi. Had you met Wendy before? No. No, okay. Now, I, I want to be sure that I have the history 
right here in terms of what you've shared with her across time. Uh, you, you've told her that you were raped, and from that rape you were impregnated. You told her that, correct? Yes. And you've told her that you have cancer. Yes. Okay. You've told her that the baby, the little girl, Michaela, could be born autistic. Not sure, but could be. Yes. Okay. That you have two friends, Vonda and Anita, who help you, right? Yes. And you've never met them, but you've texted with them. Correct. Okay. And that unexpectedly you had twins, correct? Yes. You told her that wasn't foreseen. You didn't lie about the second baby. You just didn't know about it. You delivered naturally without an epidural, and the boy was 3.4 pounds, and the girl I had uh, 8 pounds, 9 ounces. You said it was 9.7. Um, and because Mason was underweight, needed extra care, and that the rapist paid a $50,000 bond the day he was arrested, and that his motive for raping you, you explained to her, was because he wanted children. Yes and that you have a twin sister yourself. Yes. You told her that. And the kids that are living with you are your sisters. Yes. And this is, not just out of the blue, you've seen pictures, right? Correct. Is this the little girl or the this little boy? This is Michaela, the day okay. she was born. This is Michaela. Okay, these are the twins together. Yes. Okay, so, uh, and then here are the twins Correct. wrapped up. So, you've, I got the history right, correct? Correct. And, and you've seen these pictures, but you've not actually touched those babies? No. Mm -hmm. So, Danette, um, Let's just talk turkey here. Is she ever going to touch those babies? No. Say something. Don't yell at me. Don't what? Don't yell at me. Say something. I grew up in a real dysfunctional home. There was a lot of chaos there. My whole life growing up, I was just a piece of trash on the road in everybody's way. It didn't matter much. When I was a teenager, I got pregnant and I placed my child for adoption. And the only time I felt important growing up was when I did that. And I got that same feeling when I talked to Monica. Having Monica pay attention to me and talk to me every day made me feel good about myself and she made me feel important. Is she ever going to touch those babies? No. And why is she never going to touch those babies? Because they don't exist. How could you lie like that? How could you do that? What is wrong with you? What? And then to say there's two and keep on with it and on with it, what did I ever do to you? Say something. Don't yell at me. Don't what? You yell at me. Say something. I lied. I'm sorry. You're sorry? Yep. Max, Monica, I, I am so sorry but my mission here was to get you the truth why you got me the truth finally i get the truth after seven months what do you want to say everything i've like bought and spent and the i told my family about them well you need to look at the pictures of what they've done i mean they, they created this nursery. Do you, you see this up here? Yes. Created this nursery. I mean, see the look. Look at the details. The tiny things here. You just know that this is done with love and anticipation. I sent her pictures that. so she would know that I care and that I can provide for them. I mean, 
we're not rich. It's not like we can just go throw <coughs> money. Why? Uh, that's a fair question. He wants to know, she wants to know, Wendy wants to know, the world wants to know. Why would you do this to these people? I wanted a friend, and I went about it the wrong way. And when the story got out of control, I couldn't stop it. You wanted a friend? Mm-hmm. Go on Facebook. There's lots of friends there. So you, I mean, seriously, you thought, you thought you would, you would befriend her and this would make her want to be your friend. If you were going to give her her life dream, then she would want to be your friend. Right. Ultimately, this story hits a wall, right? Ultimately, you have no baby to produce. Right. So... What was your plan then? What would happen when you told your friend, no baby? I don't know. I didn't think of that. You know, but now, hang on. And I, I'm not going to yell at you, I, but I, I, I want you, These people are entitled to answers. Do you agree? Yes. And I don't accept what you just said. You said, I didn't think of that. This wasn't a bad moment. This wasn't a bad day. This wasn't a bad impulse. You did this day after day, week after week, month after month, phone, text, pictures. So it's not like you just were desperate one day and made a really bad decision. You perpetrated a long-term fraud, devastating these people mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. This took a lot of work and a lot of time. You had to think about it somewhere well, along I the line. I tried to stop it. I just should have been honest. And How did, did you it. try to stop it? You tried well, to scare her off? Yes. That's what all of this autism, cancer, rapists, yep. that's what this is about. You're trying to get her to quit. Why yeah. not just tell me the truth and then I quit and I don't put my heart and my soul and everything into it? You try to make it stop. That's <laughs> That's not. That's not right. There's no way. You spent, you spent two hours, three hours a night taking up every single day since you started this with her. Every single day on the phone, texting. I never even had my wife for the last six, seven months. And you're telling me you tried? Put that in your mind. And what you're saying is you thought you would make it so bad she would quit. Yes. She'd say, oh, autism, don't want it. Uh, you know, twins, no, don't want, oh, one of them's like half the size of the other one, don't yes. want the problems, don't want the trouble. Just you thought you you'd run her them. off that way. Just and then you don't have to be the bad guy, she quits. Right. And why the second baby? Because after this, when there was a second one, she then fell in love twice, and then had why to go Why did you add the second baby? Because she said she couldn't afford more than one kid. That is probably the meanest thing someone could do to someone, except for kill them yeah. well all right, let's everybody take a breath here next why Danette is angry at Max and Monica Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil accused of murder your daughter started getting involved in a cult killing pets an exclusive with her mother and sister do you have any doubt that she could kill this man I know she does that's Monday I'm here with Monica and Max uh, and Monica's best friend, Wendy. Uh, Danette is here who has just confessed that for months she has been working to adopt out her first thought to be child, then thought to be twins, to this loving couple here. She has just confessed that these children never existed. Not one minute of one hour of one day did they ever exist. The entire thing was a lie. The entire thing was a fraud. You, what did you get out of this? What was your payoff? Having an adult to talk to. Having an adult to talk to? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? You, you felt special when you talked to her. Yes. You had Vonda and Anita to talk to. You had, you had friends. You had adults to talk to. These people don't exist, do they? No. Oh, my God. Wow. 
Nobody exists. Wow. There is how no Vonda. There is no Anita. How can, oh my God, how can you be so sick? There are no friends. There are no babies. There is no... no. Is, is there cancer? <laughs> no, there's nothing. Oh, wow. Another one. Wow. There's no cancer. There's no rape. Brain tumor. There's no nothing. Wow. H have you had any feelings or emotions, or do you now have any feelings or emotions about these people? What you've done to them? Do you, do you have any guilt? Do you have, what, what are you feeling right now? Mm. I am very sorry, and I do feel bad that I hurt them. I feel very bad. Um, a little nervous. Uh -huh. Why? I'm angry with them. I'm sorry? I'm angry with them. You're angry with them? Yes. What are you angry with them about? Because I didn't think it needed to go this far to come here. You made it go this far. I mean, I just was trying to get us help so we can get the, the babies home. It had to go this far because... You weren't going to stop it, and she's believing it. And you were preying on her, on her generosity and her kindness and her loving nature. Yeah, but you're not going to just sit here and make me out to be a monster either because I'm I don't not. need to make you out to a monster. You are a monster. No, I'm not. You're an absolute monster. You're worse than evil. No, I'm not. You came here in hopes of what? Of finding out the truth, getting if taking home our babies. Yeah. You've watched this show a lot, right? You've watched this show a lot. You you never miss the show. Never miss the show. So you you figured, I will come here and with his resources and absolutely influence, contacts to people, whatever. Yes. Then he'll break this loose. Absolutely. He'll, he'll get into the court system or what? He'll break this loose in some yeah. way. I'm going to get the truth or I'm going to get action one way or the other. Of course. I'm not some crazy person. I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So your position is that this just ran away with you. You didn't intend. I didn't intend for it to go this far or anything like that. I didn't sit there and make some crazy master plan to run somebody's life. Mm -hmm. That wasn't what it was at all. And when it got that way, I didn't, I didn't know, I, I didn't have the guts to come out and say it straight out. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would run her off and that didn't work. But you wanted a friend, why would you want to run me off? You didn't have like, a crazy you... plan, you, you, every day you planned. What do you mean you didn't have a plan? Next, Danette sent Monica pictures of her twins. Wait until you find out where those pictures are really from. <laughs> this picture up here with the two babies together, this one, mm -hmm. are, are these dolls? I don't know. Where did you get the picture? Found it on the internet. This is not the first time you've done this, is it? Yes, it is. This is the first time you've victimized, misled, misguided somebody on the Internet? Yes. You just started with these people? Yes. Well, you got good at it quick. You got good at it quick. You're, you're finding at. pictures. You're, you're doing all kinds of stuff. You're weaving a web. This, this had to be... I only sent one picture from the Internet, and that was it. Uh-huh. The so other you've picture, never done this before? The other pictures I sent her are real pictures. They're my pictures. You sent her one pic, this picture. Mm-hmm. This Asian baby. She's not yeah. Asian. Well, she looks Asian to me. I just, who is it? That's my birth daughter. It's, a, it's an Asian baby. And my daughter is Asian. She's half I know. Vietnamese. I could pull this up online okay, and show this, you. This picture is a display picture for a photo service. Mm -hmm. It was taken by a photo service. And then they renamed her and Here's she became flying. Asian? I'm, I'm telling you, all these pictures are my pictures. Uh -huh. So you're saying that child we just looked at is your no, baby? No, it's my picture. Oh, oh. But where did, exactly it's not a picture of your baby? No. Okay. I did send some of mine, but no. But that is one of my pictures. 
How is it your picture? Because it was given to me. By, by, a, by a friend. Copy and pasted it and it became hers. Did you have a child when you were 14? Yes. Did you place that child for adoption? Yes. And was there a time in your life when you got more attention and more focus on you than when you adopted that baby out? No. Uh, so if that's true, if what you're saying is true, then that would suggest why you choose this to do, because there was a time in your life where you were adopting out a baby that was a that's wonderful nice. time for you, and so here you are adopting out a baby again, and sure enough, it pays off again for you. Yes. They may not want what I'm getting ready to say to happen, but that's okay. I, I, I try to help everybody, and you need help. Do you, do you agree with that? that? That for you to get, to select this idea, to perpetuate this idea, to put these people through this excruciating emotional pain and continue in it, whether you say I got caught up in it or whatever, w would you agree that that's not healthy? Yes. That's not a healthy choice at all. No, it wasn't. And the fact that you can do this to these people and not have remorse and guilt and pain and say you're angry for being held accountable I'm tells me that... I'm not angry for being held accountable. That's where you're wrong. I was ang I'm angry because I took it as far as I did. I'm not angry per se at any person other you said than I'm my angry at them. I'm angry at them for calling the show. And that's the Well only actually they did and she the did. Show. I did. You guys can think whatever you want. You can say whatever you want about me, but you're not me and you don't know what I really feel or what I think. And all the anger and everything else that you feel, I'm I can't ever say sorry enough. The biggest thing I'm sorry about is besides the fact that I lied, is that you're a really awesome person. And the seven months I spent with you, hanging out, talking, everything, made me feel really good. I'm not trying to be selfish by saying this, but I appreciated your friendship a lot. I wish I would have had the guts to tell you the truth. I wish I would have never done it. You don't have to believe me. I don't expect you to. I don't expect anything from you other than to say I'm sorry. You didn't have a friendship with us. You stole a friendship is what you did. <laughs> Beyond anything else, I can't imagine anything but evil that, that can generate what you did. If, if I offer to arrange you some professional help, to, to have you appreciate the nature, of the gravity of what you've done here, and to try to heal whatever inside you is broken so that you don't do this to anyone else and or yourself again, will you take that help? Yes. Because I, I, I think you really, really need help, and I want to really, really help you with that, okay? Yes. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. I hate that this has happened to you, and I, I don't want to leave this situation broken. I, you came to get the truth, but I don't want you to just go home with the truth. So joining us now is the executive director of Nightlight Christian Adoption Agency and the Embryo Adoption Awareness Center, uh, Dr. Daniel Nervous. Now, he's here to help Monica and Max learn the right path to adoption. So, Daniel, thank you so much for being here. This is a... This is a... 
This is a terrible, terrible situation, correct? This is. Max and Monica, I'm so sorry for what you had to go through. It's uh, something no one should have to deal with. It is rare for birth mothers to um, scam like this. The vast majority of them are honest. And uh, more than that, they're heroic. We have two birth mothers who work for our agency, and they made a sacrificial decision that was in the best interest of their child. So that's more common. Uh, you guys have been at this for a long time, right? Our agency was founded in 1959, and uh, we have offices in four states throughout the country now. Yeah, and this is something that, I mean, how many adoptions have you all helped to make happen? We've completed over 3,000 adoptions. Most of them are from other countries or domestic, but we also have an embryo adoption program. Okay, and the embryo adoption program is what? That's called the Snowflake Program, and it was founded in 1997, and that's where people can place their frozen embryos that are in storage for other families to adopt them. So how do you want to help these folks? Uh, we'd be willing to um, waive your fees for adoption. We know that it's expensive. If you um, are able to start with the Snowflake program, we can take a look at that. If that's not the best program for you, then we can offer to waive the fees for domestic adoption as well. Yeah. <laughs> To give you a sense here of, of what he's, he's talking about, you know, typically the adoption fees for domestic adoption are around $8,000. The fixed birth mother expense fund is like $5,000. The embryo adoption is like $8,000. I mean, just depending on what fits for you and where you want to go. And what uh, the good doctor is saying here is that we want to make a gift of all of that to you all. Let's do this the right way, right down the middle of Main Street. All of the fees are taken care of. This will be a, be a top priority, and we will connect you with the baby that you guys deserve. Can we do that for you? Thank you. Thank you. No expense to you all. We'll take care of it. Okay. We expect an update very soon. All right. I'd like to thank all of my guests today, especially you, Doctor. Thank you so much for being here. Um, for more information on today's show, you can visit drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. 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 Thank